Today, we're gonna to get into the things that you need to do so that you can be promoted to supervisor at your security company. Welcome back to the Strategic Service YouTube channel. My name's Eric. So first things first, to be promoted to a supervisor at a security company, you need to work at a security company. So if you're looking to get into the field, check out a video that I did on the security hiring process. It's linked in the video description. So above all else, if you're trying to elevate yourself to a supervisor position, you need to have excellent attendance. Second, you need to be on time. And guess what? On time means early. Your client and your supervisor take notice of this. Third, you need to have a good relationship with your client. Easiest ways to accomplish this are proper greetings of the day, good morning, sir or ma'am, good evening, good night, being alert and attentive while at your post, and overall demonstrating a mastery of the site at which you work. Also, wear your uniform professionally. I also did a video on that, which will also be linked in my description. But wearing your uniform like a true professional is gonna set you apart from your competition. Next, if you're looking for ways for your supervisor to take notice of you, the easiest is to accept or ask for overtime. The foundation of security staffing is staffing. There are always shifts that need to be filled, and we need help with them. So if you want us to take notice of you, pick up some extra shifts. It goes a long way. And this demonstrates your ability to work outside of your normal 40 hours a week, which is something that you will often do as a supervisor. People who work their 40 and leave typically are passed over in this process. Also, learn how to not be a burden to your manager. What I mean is, are you constantly calling them with questions that could easily be answered by opening the employee handbook? or referencing training that was given? Or are you the person that brings solutions to your supervisor rather than problems? Because those are the ones that we look for in our supervisory hiring processes. And lastly, you need to master the site at which you work. How can you supervise something that you don't even understand? This means that you need to be an expert at whatever location that you're currently employed at. You need to know the ins and outs of the building. You need to know faces and names and you need to know all emergency procedures by heart. So now that you've done the things that you need for your manager to take notice of you, sometimes it's just as simple as letting them know that you're interested in a change or a promotion. So now there's two ways that you can get promoted. One is internally and the other is laterally moving to another agency. Not all companies are the same. Some don't have room for advancement and unfortunately a lot hire externally to fill their management and supervisory positions. So if you're at a company that's not willing to move you up, it's time to go back to those online resources like Indeed, Craigslist, Career Builder, and start looking for agencies that are hiring for management or supervisory positions. The hiring process is gonna be the same as the video I did before about the security hiring process, but there's gonna be some different questions, such as how much missed time is acceptable? Zero. What do you do in the event that one of your posts is unmanned? Go in and work it yourself if you have to. What do you think is the top quality of a leader? the ability to do the work yourself and lead by example. And the rest will just be some common sense staffing questions. For example, if a guard at the site is telling you that they need to leave early, what are some options to make sure that there is no lapse in coverage? This is where you gotta put your thinking caps on. See if the next guard can come in early. See if anyone who's currently off can come in, but make sure that they're not currently in an overtime status. This shows your thought process in terms of loss and revenue. Typically in security, it costs more to pay a guard overtime to work than we're even billing for a guard to be there in the first place. So in that example, it may be time for you to come in and work it yourself. And this shows your dedication both to the client to make sure that they have the coverage that they've asked for and to show the company that they're not losing money employing you to run their site. Now, what are the different kinds of supervisory positions? Most companies start with field supervisors. These are generally people who patrol large areas and conduct pop-up inspections at different accounts. However, a lot of companies abuse this sort of position and actually just use you as a designated fill-in for any open posts, and those companies are gonna burn you out. So if you need supervisor experience just to put on your resume, that's a good start, but don't plan on staying there long. Another form of supervision are site supervisors. Most companies use this position as someone who schedules for the site, interacts directly with the client, and ensures the daily overall success of all the guards employed at that location. And above that, typically, is an account manager. This is someone who does the same things as a site supervisor, but over the span of several locations, typically under one account. 
Now, all these terms are interchangeable. I've been at companies that refer to field supervisors, but they're actually fulfilling the positions of account managers. And there's different ways that these people are scheduled. Some site supervisors a Monday through Friday day shift. Some actually work a post and fulfill their supervisory responsibilities in their free time. Some are completely unbillable and have full reign to ensure the success of their accounts. But it's all gonna depend on the company in which you work and how they treat their supervision and management staff. So now you've got the job. What can you do to make sure that you're the best supervisor or manager that you can be? Rule number one, don't let the power go to your head. This is not the time to kick back in the office and relax. This is the time for you to lead by example and to show the guards under you what success looks like at this account. You're gonna have to put in a lot of hours outside of your regular schedule. And the objective of that is exposure. You want every guard at that account to know your face and your name. And you want to develop a relationship with every guard underneath of you. The goal is for you to capture their respect, for them to look at you and know that you're someone who leads by example, not someone who directs from a cushy office. Someone who knows the job and has done it and can teach them how to do it well. So you need to be in the trenches with your employees. You also need to work hard for the quality of life of your employees underneath of you. If they have time off requests, do everything you can to fill them. Sometimes you might have to work those time off requests yourself. And depending where you're working, that may or may not be paid overtime. But in the end, if you did a favor to your employee, you're doing the right thing. Because in most scenarios, that employee is now going to respect you more for it. And they're going to return that favor to you in some form or another. Hopefully by being the best guard they can be at the location they're working underneath of you. If your employees have an issue, whether it's pay, benefits, or anything, try to be their one-stop shop for all of their needs. If your go-to response is call so-and-so, email that person, call the security operations center, not me. Your employees are quickly going to receive the impression that either you don't care or you don't know. Instead, let all employee communications flow through you to the company. This also works twofold because the company is going to take note that you actually are controlling your site. And going back to what I said in the last video, we need maintenance free employees and sites and accounts more than anything. Now, a problem you may run into. Being promoted to supervisor an account that you already worked at can sometimes lead to challenges, such as employees that you work coworkers with who now work underneath of you, sometimes have trouble differentiating the line of friend and supervisor. You need to be firm with these employees and let them know that they need to respect your new position. You can still be friends outside of work, but you need to make sure that you are not treating them any differently than any other employee because their coworkers are going to take notice. Now, some companies will actually move you to another account when promoted to supervision, and that's a smart move for that reason. Last and most importantly, stay a team player. I'm not just talking about at your account, I'm talking about region-wide. You're now gonna start being included in supervisor Zoom meetings or phone conferences. You need to step in when possible and help elevate your other supervisors to success. Now you need to be careful just not to be condescending, but if you're on a phone conference, for example, and you overhear of an issue that you've dealt with before, let them know that you've had a past experience with that issue and maybe what you've done to help solve it. Because the fastest way that people make their way into supervision and then back down is by trying to step on other people's toes and use them as rungs on the ladder to success. And I'm gonna leave you with this advice. If the company's getting complaints that you're too rude as a supervisor, you're doing it right. Now I'm not saying that you need to have a power trip and treat people like garbage, but very often you'll find that when you're dealing with an employee who's constantly causing disciplinary issues within your management, the first thing they do is launch a smear campaign because it's their only defense. To them, it's easier to try to get you moved or fired than to just do the right thing. I can't tell you how many times I've ran into this issue. So documentation is your best friend. Give one verbal warning. After that, it's paperwork. It's not personal. But the handbook is the handbook and the rules are the rules. Follow them or don't. It's not my job to interpret them. It's my job to enforce them. Most companies understand that. So don't get too worked up about that. I hope this video helped you. If it did, feel free to like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.